President Trump attempting to clear up some remarks that caused a beltway backlash after yesterday's summit with Russian President Vladimir Putin. Take a listen. In a key sentence in my remarks, I said the word would instead of wouldn't. The sentence should have been, I don't see any reason why I wouldn't or why it wouldn't be Russia. So just to repeat it, I said the word would instead of wouldn't. And the sentence should have been, and I thought it would be maybe a little bit unclear on the transcript or unclear on the actual video. The sentence should have been, I don't see any reason why it wouldn't be Russia. Here now to react is Arizona Congressman Andy Biggs, member of the House Judiciary Committee and House Freedom Caucus. Now, Congressman, I am willing to bet you at least a dinner, if not a, a week of dinners, <laughs> that there are going to be a lot of Democrats who are not going to accept that. And we're going to say, oh, come on, you want us to. What, what do you think is going to be the reaction from uh, inside the Beltway about what the president said? I'm not going to take your bet because I think you're right. I think a lot of people are going to say that that's just an, an afterthought. But the reality is uh, he's been fairly consistent in two points on this. Number one, that Russia did interfere with the election. But I think what happens is it gets conflated a lot of time because I think what he's really also always hitting at is there was no, he always says collusion. I, there's no such thing as collusion in my mind in this. It's conspiracy. There was no conspiracy. Right between the, his campaign and the Russian interference. And I think sometimes that gets conflated. And, you know, well, and uh, also you have to think about time. I, again, I don't want to make any excuses for the president. He's responsible for what he said. But at the same point, even though it was Rod Rosenstein who came out on Friday and announced the indictment of the Russians on, on tampering with the election, it came from Robert Mueller's office. That's where the indictment originally came from. It was re a referral to the Department of Justice from Robert Mueller. And I don't think the president was anxious to credit Robert Mueller, a guy who's been after the president's scalp for over a year. No, I think you're exactly right. And that's a point I don't think people have really made uh, a light of, because in reality, the timing of that to me was really suspect. You've got these 12 people or so indicted uh, that are all Russian uh, uh, citizens, and how are we going to even get them over here? So uh, I think that's a problem. I also think the nature of the question uh, overshadowed really what took place in a, in a very important summit, trying to at least find some points of commonality. Right. Uh, and, and that's what I think what this should be about, is the substance of the summit and not uh, 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 kind of a verbal uh, well, blunder, Well, before we will. leave timing, though, and I, you bring up an interesting point, do you think Rod Rosenstein himself, I mean, he could have chosen after the summit to come out with the, uh, with the thing in the Russia. Do you think he was really trying to force the president's hand in the way he was dealing with Russia? I, I absolutely do, because uh, he could simply have issued a press release. He didn't have to have a full-blown press conference and roll this out there a couple of days before he knows the president's having this very important summit. I think he should have waited. Uh, those indictments could wait. Uh, there's not going to be uh, an extradition necessarily anyway. Uh, he should have waited until the president had completed his yeah. uh, summit. That would By have been the way, wiser. You are a member of the Freedom Caucus, and I understand the Freedom Caucus believes that Rod Rosenstein was involved in, in threatening them in some way. Can you explain? Yeah, so what happened is the House Intelligence Committee, some of the staffers indicated that uh, Mr. Rosenstein uh, gave a threat that he might investigate them uh, because the staff was pushing very hard as we wanted and as the Intel Committee wanted to, for them to comply with the subpoenas. You know, we've, we, we've requested documents, some almost a year old, and they haven't complied. And so when the press was made uh, in, in a room in a meeting, uh, the uh, Deputy Attorney General Ro Rosenstein basically uh, indicated that he might uh, investigate them or look yeah. into their phone records. And that's, you know, that's what we want to find out. Congressman, very quickly, they're giving me a wrap, but uh, Mr. Mueller, there's a lot of questions about the way he's running his investigation, including his hires, his budget. Uh, the questions now about Peter Strzok and whether or not Peter Strzok was not told. Peter Strzok claims he wasn't told why he was let off of the Mueller commission, uh, but a lot of people find it hard to believe. Is it time to put Mr. Mueller on, on the stand and ask him some questions? Uh, I think it's just about time. I think that uh, that's why I think we need a second special counsel, actually, to, to take a look at the investigators, because this has been really irregular. Congressman Biggs, great to see you, Congressman. Thank you very Thanks. much for coming. Busy day. Appreciate it.